Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God for our consideration today is taken from our second lesson, 2 Timothy chapter 3, excuse me, chapter 4, beginning with the first verse. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let's do a little crowd participation today. I want you to think for a moment if you were going to describe this world with one single word, what would that be? Sinful. Shout it out if you have one. Groaning. Groaning. There's a good one. Depraved. Depraved. Boy, you guys are painting such a beautiful picture of our world. Go ahead, Addison. Short. 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 Okay. God. God's in the world. Okay. Confused. Confuse. Again, you guys are painting a pretty ugly picture with the exception of one person here. A little child will lead them, apparently. <laughs> but you think of the, the picture of all of these have negative connotations to it. And here's a word that you didn't say, but you could have used. Itching. Now, for those of you with keen ears, you said, wait a second, that word was introduced in our second lesson today. Because we live in a world where people have itching ears. And Paul talks about there's going to be a time where people gather around themselves, all sorts of teachers, because they want to hear what their itching ears want to hear. So that's the world we're in, in this itching world. So as we study God's word together today, we're going to look at how do we deal with this itching world? How do we deal with this world who wants to hear one thing and yet God says it needs another? And the encouragement that Paul gives is rather simple. Simple. He gives it to his young colleague Timothy. He gives it really to all workers and he gives it to you, my fellow Christians. Simply he says, preach the word. Now Paul's not asking the impossible. He's not saying to people, okay, now you have to go do this impossible thing. No, you go back to the verses just before where our portion of scripture passage for our sermon begins. So still in that second lesson, and Paul says, look at what God has equipped you with. He says, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Doesn't matter the situation. Doesn't matter if you are in the hospital. It doesn't matter if you are at the graveside. Doesn't matter if you are in Walmart or Kmart or any other mart for that matter. God's word applies. You remember that old iPhone commercial? Came out about 2009, had that catchphrase, there's an app for that. Meaning if there's something you want to do, there's likely somebody else who thought of it and came up with it, and so you can find an app to accomplish just about anything. Well, God says, look at what you have in my word. My word is useful for teaching and correcting and training in righteousness. Not so that you can barely get by, but so that you are thoroughly equipped for every good deed. And now Paul turns his attention and says, listen to the charge that I'm going to give to you. It says to Timothy, to all Christians, preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. That word preach is kind of an interesting word. It literally means to serve as a herald. Do you think about what a herald would do? A herald would bring a message from a king. He would shout it out. He would carry the authority of the king. But his authority was limited. He couldn't choose the message he was to preach. He was supposed to simply proclaim it. He couldn't choose the time and the location, whether it was in season or out of season. He simply was told, go and preach it. Go and proclaim it so people can hear it. And now he tells Christians, preach the word. You know, it's easy to apply this and say, well, this is one of Paul's pastoral epistles. He's, he's writing to his fellow pastor and giving Timothy, this, his young colleague, the encouragement. Make sure you preach the word. And we see that naturally, don't we? 
in season and out of season for a pastor. You might say, well, in season when a pastor is standing in front of a congregation on a Sunday morning, when it's convenient and it's, and it's comfortable and it's hopefully receiving, being received well, that's the in season. But also when it's out of season. When the pastor is not standing in the front of a church, but maybe in the back of the grocery line. That's out of season, but be prepared to preach. Because people need to hear the good news of salvation. And no matter what the situation, God's word is always going to apply. But now this isn't simply for only pastors. It's not simply for Timothy. He says to you, fellow Christian, Preach the word in season and out of season. Well, when is in season for you? It's the times you're most prepared, right? The times where it's convenient. Maybe you've been called on to teach a Sunday school lesson. Well, what do you do? But you open up that lesson, you read through it, you anticipate questions, you prepare craft, you make sure that you're set to go so that you can teach it. Or maybe if you teach Sunday school, maybe you've had a friend say, hey, I have some questions about the Lord's Supper. Can you meet with me for coffee and we can talk about it? Well, that's still in season. How do you prepare for it? Maybe you go scrambling and find that old blue catechism or red catechism or green catechism or whatever generation you are from and go, where is it that it talks about the Lord's Supper? Or maybe you call up your pastor on the phone and say, Pastor, quick, Point me to the passages that talk about the Lord's Supper so I'm well prepared. That's in season. That's comfortable. That person wants to know more about God's word. But what about when it's out of season? When is it out of season for you? And maybe the question comes, how have I done when it's out of season? You know, you think of how busy we are in our lives we got so much going on, our kids are just as busy as we are. And then your neighbor just happens to catch you as you're about to run on your 10 errands that you have to do and says, by the way, I just got a diagnosis from the doctor and it's not good. That's out of season. Are you prepared for that? Maybe not. Or maybe your friend runs into you at work and says, by the way, my wife just filed for divorce. Are you prepared for that? You don't have time to go, can you just hold that thought? I'm going to go check the notes I took at Bible class last year and I, I'm sure I have something on this. I'm guessing most of you don't have me on speed dial. And you can't say, wait, I'm going to check with my pastor on what to say. That's out of season. Or maybe you find yourself on a Southwest flight and you look at the person next to you and he's Muslim. Or maybe the t-shirt, the graphic t-shirt he's wearing say, says something graphic and anti-Christian. What do you want to do with that situation? Is that the time you want to really preach the word? Or is it the time you throw the earbuds in and say, pull the sleeping mask down and say, I'm not even going to get the free soda or the free peanuts because I just want this flight to pass. He says, be prepared in season and out of season. So how have you done? Have you ever failed? Failed at that opportunity when God says, here it is before you to, to share my word? I know I have. And you think of what goes through our mind when God gives these opportunities and says, here is somebody who needs to hear my word and you are the one to bring that person the word. And we say, I don't know if they would believe me. What will they think of me? There's that fear that starts taking hold of us. And then there's also that sheer laziness. That's so much of a bother. You know, do you realize how long of a conversation that would be if I actually talked to this person about it? This Muslim man, there's no hope for him. Why waste my time? I do better getting a good night's sleep on the plane. It's fear, it's laziness, it's greediness of time, it's, it's arrogance. This person doesn't deserve to hear it. All of these things run through our head and say, now is not the time. You know, think about that. When, when God says to us, when you stand before my throne and I say, look at what I've done for you, how could you not share the word with somebody I brought right to you? What would you say? Sorry, Lord, it wasn't convenient. 
Well, all we're doing with that is heaping guilt on ourselves when we don't make the most of the opportunities that God presents to us. He's arranged it for us to, to preach these things, to preach him to them. And really, when you think about it, when we fail to use those opportunities, we're in a sense stifling the work of the Holy Spirit. Should he hold us accountable for it? As we heap up guilt for ourselves? He should. But then, remember the word that he says to preach. And first preach it to yourself. Preach that word that he's given you. Preach that name that he has given you and say, look at what Jesus has done for me. For the times I've been lazy, Jesus bled for me. For the times that I've been arrogant and said, this person doesn't deserve it, Jesus was battered for me. For the times when I didn't take the opportunity, when I was afraid, when I wasn't confident in the message, Jesus says, I went and removed your sin forever so that that doesn't count against you ever. My body was broken for you. The message that I've given you to share, it applies to you first. He says, I've removed your sin as far as the east is from the west so that now you are forgiven and restored and redeemed and standing before me and set to inherit heaven. So preach the word, whether it's in season or out of season. Because Jesus wants us to, to hear that word. He wants us to be prepared to speak that word at every single time and every single occasion that he gives us so that his word can be shared and his word can be believed. He's not asking the impossible. He's asking something that takes some work, can be a little scary at times, because it's not always going to be easy to be a herald because of the world that we are sent out into. But he says, this is what the world needs. Paul writes, For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you... Keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. This was true in Timothy's day, and it's pretty obvious in our day too, isn't it? People gather around them what they want, teachers who will tell them what they want to hear. You pick a sin, any sin, and you can find something that's going to tell you, you know what, that's a pretty good thing for you to do. And keep on doing it. And if anybody tells you differently, then they're wrong. We can find people who will tell us what we want to hear. The world is full of people who want to tell you and the rest of the world what they want to hear. But God says, that's not the truth. I need you to hold to the truth and the truth of my word. Because the fact of the matter is, unbeliever doesn't want to hear the word of God. An unbeliever detests the word of God. An unbeliever doesn't want to hear that he's sinful. An unbeliever even doesn't want to hear that Jesus saved him from his sin because he doesn't want to acknowledge it. And yet, Paul says, this is what you need to do. You need to speak the truth at all times, at all occasions, because this is what the world needs to hear. People have an itch that they want scratched. They want to take what their sin is and have it be allowed and seen as okay. Think about what is passed as okay in our world today. You think of things like abortion. You think of things like the transgender issues. You think of even sex outside of marriage. And you will have people, you will have newspaper articles saying that these are good and beneficial things to you and to society. But you know, the attacks also come from within the Christian church. This week, the Episcopal Church is going to be debating whether or not to change their book of common prayer to have gender-neutral language when referring to God. But you know, this is nothing new in the, in the Christian church. The United Methodist Church, the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America already went through all this. 
But you know, it's not just a matter of changing pronouns. It's a matter of changing God's word. It's a matter of setting oneself up and saying, you know what, I know better than God does on how he should reveal himself. And it's a matter of people saying, this way I can legitimize whatever sin that I have so that God doesn't speak against it. The attacks come from without and they come from within. And what does Paul say? Preach the word. And as you do, so you think about when people start talking about our Savior, when they start saying blasphemous things about it, when they want to change the Word of God, that's enough to get us riled up, isn't it? To get us anxious and we want to fire back on all four cylinders and just blast them away. Well, what does Paul say? Keep your head. Because if you lose your cool, you lose your point. Keep your head. Deal with these people with patient instruction, with careful instruction. Because, you know, the thing that's going to change their hearts is not making more laws. It's not enforcing the ones we already have on the books. It's sharing the Word of God. Paul tells Timothy, and he gives us this encouragement, do the work of an evangelist. What's an evangelist? Someone who shares the good news about Jesus. The only thing that's going to change hearts is Christians proclaiming that word, giving the Holy Spirit the opportunity to change those hearts. You and I live in an itchy world. A world that wants to go far from God. But our role is to speak the truth. It's to speak the truth at all times and in all places so that God's name can be clearly proclaimed. Whether it's in season, when it's comfortable, when it's convenient, when we have a receptive audience, or even when it's uncomfortable, when it's inconvenience. It, and so what does that mean? I need to be in the Word. I need to know the Word. I need to be able to share that Word to say, this is why you have the assurance of your salvation. So that when it comes along and that friend says, I just got this diagnosis. You can share Jesus with that person and say, this is just a shell we live in. This earthly body will pass away, but through faith in Jesus, eternal life. Know that word that you are saved through Jesus, by grace, through faith alone. So that when that neighbor says, look, I'm facing divorce from my wife, you can say, here's the comfort that you have of somebody who will never leave you. God has given us his word to preach in season and out of season. And so we want to be prepared by being in the word and speaking that truth in all of its truth and purity. Amen. Please stand.